I'd like to welcome everyone to Real Health Discovery Series. I'm Dr. Ron Henning Hockey. I'm the Chief Medical Officer here in Wichita. And we have a satellite in Kansas City, the Overland Park satellite of Reardon Clinic. And it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Gail Wheeler once again to our, our program. And today we're going to be discussing um, Monal Doran. And uh, so this kind of came about because Gail, you, you had the inspiration to write a really nice article about Mono Lauren when we were talking to uh, people about the, the pandemic uh, and how this might be a way to boost people's immune system. So kind of refresh our audience a little bit about Mono Lauren and how you got interested in it. Well, I became interested in Mama Lauren early in my career as a physician. I treated a lot of patients early on with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia kind of symptoms. And I noticed for many of them that their symptoms would present in kind of a viral sort of pattern. Their symptoms would wax and wane. When it got worse, they would have, sometimes they'd have sore throat, headaches, Lip, swollen lymph nodes even. It got me thinking that maybe some of these people possibly have a viral infection that they just have not been able to clear completely that just keeps reactivating. So what I was looking for was a safe antiviral product that they could use on a regular basis. Ran on to Monolaurin and um, started using it for some of these patients. and. For some of these folks, it was a game changer. It really helped them tremendously. And then there was uh, one season, this is when I was back in Florida a long time ago, one season when there was a really bad flu going around the community. And uh, I had just gotten the monolaurin and I, I hadn't worked with it very much yet. I had a patient who called me and uh, sounded terrible. She said that she and her best friend were planning this trip to Europe. They'd planned it for years. They were leaving tomorrow. Her friend was flying into town that evening. She had woken up that morning, told me her symptoms, and it was that flu. It was unmistakable. So I told her, well, we just got this stuff in. I can't make any promises, but here's how to take it. Here's how to dose your friends, and I wish you the best of luck. She came in and picked it up. I heard from her about a month later, and uh, she said they had a wonderful trip. She said later that evening, she started feeling better. The next morning, she woke up as though she'd never been sick. Her friend never got the flu. They had a wonderful trip. I was truly blown away by that because this was a bad flu. It was, it was one of those that people were being knocked out for a couple of weeks by, and um, this was impressive. And that was the first in many, many different patient testimonials that I've had on monolaurin. So in kind of orienting our audience to monolaurin, where does it come from? Uh, what is it made from? Is it a completely natural substance? How do you get it? Some of these kind of questions. Sure. Monolaurin is an extract from lauric acid, which is an extract from coconut oil. Um, it is natural. It's very safe. In fact, the FDA has classified it as uh, uh, generally considered safe for food products or anything else, supplements or anything else. Um, and uh, you can give it to elderly people. You can give it to little kids. You can give it to everybody in between. There's no drug interaction. I've never seen any side effect from it, never heard of a side effect from it. Um, I suppose if somebody were hypersensitive to coconut, it may not be a good idea. It's a pretty rare allergy. Um, so we, we've not seen anything like that yet. It's, it's a very safe product. Well, I mean, I, uh, I was just reading about it that it's found in mother's breast milk. So Indeed. it's got to be pretty darn safe and, <laughs> and pretty important in terms of survival of the little ones. That's right. Nature designed that way because uh, those little ones don't have their immune system up and running yet. And uh, the monolaurin can help protect them, the lauric acid can. 
I've heard that it also works against the envelope, the membrane envelope of viruses, and, and it not only works for viruses, but against bacteria and fungi, like yeast infections and things like that. So it's, it's got a lot of utilization power. Yes, indeed it does. With the virus, what it tends to do is dissolve that lipid capsule that protects the virus and uh, keeps it from your immune system, um, identifying it. Once that capsule is gone, that virus is vulnerable to your immune system and you can clear it so much more quickly. And yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Since I started using Monolaurin many years ago, we are just finding out more and more. It seems to have antibacterial properties, uh, as you said, antifungal properties. Um, they've shown that it's uh, been effective in antibiotic resistant Staph aureus, um, so many different things. And it shows a lot of promise uh, for, for future treatments. Well, we see so many patients who have chronic fatigue, chronic infections, Epstein-Barr, uh, things that suggest that there is an underlying, uh, uh, you know, uh, infection of some sort. And yet a lot of these patients have been on multiple rounds of antibiotics. They've acquired antibiotic resistance and they kind of feel like there's nothing left to try or they're afraid to try it for fear that it's going to mess up their digestive system or cause other problems. So it would seem like this would be uh, a very natural uh, alternative that people should at least try because the side effect profile is so, so low. Oh, absolutely. And what's interesting too is, you know, we think of sometimes if a person has say a high level of a bacterial infection or say a parasitic infection, and we're treating that, one of the things that we have to be very careful of is kind of what we call a Herxheimer reaction or the mm -hmm. die-off kind of a reaction. Interestingly, I have not seen that with monolaurin. Um, it doesn't seem to be an issue with monolaurin. I don't know if it just approaches it in such an organic way instead of you know, being like a sledgehammer and killing everything off all at once. Uh, it's, it's interesting though, we just don't seem to see that. And it also preserves the healthy gut bacteria. We're reading more and more about the gut biome and how critical that is for our health. And uh, using the use of traditional antibiotics can uh, really kind of mess up people's guts. But right. here's something that doesn't seem to bother the gut and it actually promotes uh, the, the thriving of the good bacteria. It's almost too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> but it, we're very fortunate that we have this available. I wish more people knew about it as a therapeutic option. So, okay, someone is uh, interested in, in this. Uh, what are the different forms of monolaurin that you might encourage them to look for? Uh, what, what seems to work best, what kind of dosages for just the general population? Mm -hmm. First of all, whenever I recommend a supplement, I always recommend that you get it from a reputable source because as we know, there are some products out there that are being copied and, and not, not being copied well. Um, so first of all, make sure that your source is a, a good solid source. Um, I like the capsule form. Monolaurin can be bitter in flavor. Um, there are, you can get powders, but again, it, it can not be very palatable. Um, and uh, I usually recommend, say for an acute illness, I usually recommend 600 milligram capsules. Take three of those every three hours until you've been feeling well for at least 24 hours. And uh, the reason I say it that way is because, interestingly, when you take monolaurin, you might kind of start feeling better a little later. And you think, oh, I'm on the downside of this. I don't need to take this any longer. But you're not all the way there yet. So I have found that it's a good idea just to keep taking it until you've truly been feeling well for about 24 hours. And again, that's uh, 600 milligram capsules every three hours while you're awake. If you wake up in the middle of the night, take another dose. It won't upset your stomach on an empty stomach. 
people who are, pr who are prone to yeast infections, can they use it on a daily basis? Is there any fear of resistance developing or having some kind of long-term adverse reaction? Oh, no, that's a great question. Um, you can take it on a daily basis. Usually for a chronic issue like that, I recommend, again, the 600 milligram capsules, two of them twice a day. Um, you don't have to worry about taking it with food, without food. And we have not seen any kind of an issue with resistance being developed. Another way I usually recommend that a person take monolorin is a preventative. Say if you are concerned that you may have just been exposed or you've been traveling, once we get to travel again at some point, um, then not a bad idea to take a couple monolorin twice a day for a day or two just to make sure that uh, you're addressing anything that you might possibly have picked up. So as a preventative measure, it can be beneficial in that way too. Yeah. Well, Dr. Wheeler, we're so glad that you've joined us in, at the Kansas City uh, Reardon Clinic staff. Um, you're, you're, you have a, a, a good foundation in uh, osteopathic medicine, I understand. Um, how, how, just a parting question here, a lot of people wonder how does osteopathic doctors, how does that relate to medical doctors or naturopaths? Oh, great question. We, um, we have all the same training that an MD would have and more. We, we also get additional training in the neuromusculoskeletal uh, system and how all of that works together to really optimize a person's health. So it gives us another tool of treatment that an MD may not have. Um, we, I would say that we don't get a lot of training in nutrition. That is something that unfortunately still lacks a little bit for both MDs and DOs. And it's something that an individual does have to go and seek on their own. Um, that, uh, yeah, we, I wish we had a little bit more of the naturopathic training in our program. Yeah. I wish that for uh, for family doctors and regular MDs as well. It's just not been as emphasized as it needs to be. Well, anyway, thank you very much for your words of wisdom today. And uh, we hope to have you back on uh, Real Health Discovery soon. So thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. <laughs>